Hi, I'm Cheryl Leach. In this problem, we're going to use a table to help us evaluate a limit. And then after we're done, we're going to go ahead and use a graphing utility to verify a result. Okay, so let's take a look at this limit. I have the limit as x approaches 0 of the sine of 4x all over 2x. Now, if I try to do this analytically, I might try to just substitute in a 0. But if that happens, I've got the sine of 0, which is 0, over 0. 0 over 0 is an indeterminate form. I can't apply my basic limit laws. So instead of looking for an analytical technique, this time I'm going to try to use a table to help me get to the answer. So what I want to do is plug in negative 0.1 into my expression and see what my result is. So if I do that, I'm going to take the sine of 4 times negative 0.01 and divide that by 2 times negative 0.01. And my result is 1.947092. Okay. Now I'm going to repeat this process, only this time I'm going to plug in negative 0.01. So I've got the sine of 4 times negative 0 0.01 divided by 2 times negative 0 0.01. And my result is 1.999467. Now I'm going to do a similar thing for the rest of these as well. So when I plug in negative 0 0.001, I end up with 1.99. 9995. Now notice I'm switching here. I'm going from negative numbers and now I'm going to plug in some positive values. But when I plug in 0 0.001, I'm going to get exactly the same thing I did when I plugged in negative 0 0.001. So this is 1.9999995. And when I plug this one in, I will get the same thing as when I plugged in the negative version. So this will be 1.9. 999467. And finally, I'll plug in 0.1. It will give me the same result as when I plug in negative 0.1, and I get 1.947092. Okay, now it's time to interpret my graph, or my table, excuse me. So, let's see what happens as x gets close to zero. Well, the first three numbers are telling me what happens as I approach zero from the left. I'm taking negative numbers, so it's smaller than zero, but I'm getting closer and closer to zero. So I'm looking at what's happening as I'm coming in this direction. Well, look at these numbers. They're getting closer and closer to it looks like two. Am I guaranteed that it's actually going to two? No, I don't have that guarantee, but that's what it looks like from my table. All right, now let's try approaching zero from the right-hand side. So I'm going to take some values bigger than zero, but get closer and closer to zero, which means I'm going to be looking at the table in this direction. What happens at point one? And then I'm going to get closer at point oh one, and closer yet at point oh oh one. Well, again, if I look at these numbers, it looks like they're getting closer and closer to the value two. So using my table, I'm going to say that this limit is equal to 2. Now this is not an analytical technique. I can't guarantee that that's the answer, but that's a good approximation. So why don't we go ahead and look at our graphing calculators to see if I can verify this result. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enter the function sine of 4x divided by 2x. So I have the sine of 4x divided by 2x. And then I'm going to graph it. Now when you graph this function, a nice window to look at would be from negative 5 to positive 5 with a scale of 1 on the x-axis, and a minimum of y for negative 1, a maximum of 3, and again a scale of 1. So if I change the window for that setup, and I look at my graph, the next thing I want to do is hit the trace key. 
And when I hit the trace key, I'm going to be able to use my arrow keys to move along the curve. And I can see that as I'm moving along the curve, as my x values are getting closer to zero, my y values are getting closer to two. And it doesn't matter whether I'm tracing a little before I hit zero or a little after I hit zero. As I'm approaching zero, the values are getting closer and closer to two. Now, one thing that's kind of interesting, try doing an evaluate. So evaluate my function at zero. When you evaluate the function at zero, you'll notice that it does not give you a solution. That's because this function is not defined at zero. Technically, there's a hole in the graph there, so the value never actually reaches two. However, the limit does equal two, because when I take a limit, I don't care what happens as when I hit zero, only what happens as I'm getting close to zero. And as I get close to zero, the function value gets close to two. I hope this was helpful. Thanks.